Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze and Blaze Stewart, Architect at Winelect. And today we're going to be looking at Azure Static Web Apps. Hi guys, today I'm going to take a look at Azure Static Web Apps, and this is a fairly recent addition to Azure hosting options for apps, and it's used to host static applications or static websites on Azure. Now, a static website is basically just static content. So that is CSS, JavaScript, and images and things like that, that do not require a server backend to render them. So they're already pre-rendered and they're uploaded onto a web server. And then the browser basically just does a request and those files are sent as is back to the browser. And then the browser will then use those to create the web page based on whatever's in those files. Now, this is a very common way to build applications, what we call single page applications. And in that paradigm, we're using basically frameworks that all run in the browser. And instead of using the server to render the HTML, the browser just uses the static content and then it calls out to APIs that return data either through JSON or XML or some other format and uses that to render things inside of the browser. And this is a very common approach to application development. And there's a lot of frameworks for it, like Angular View and many others. I'm not going to be getting into the specifics of any specific framework, but I do want to talk about the Azure Static Web Apps, just show you how easy it is to set one of these up. And we'll be looking at one of the server-side rendering engines that you can use to build static content websites in a future video. But today, I just want to kind of look at what this is and how easy it is to set up this particular service on Azure then, and then use GitHub as a back end for it to serve up data into that particular web app, whatever it might be. But this is a very cool way to host things. And there's a free option and you can use it for personal projects, which I'm gonna be using for this demo. And I think it's a great way to get started with web development and you can have it as a way to experiment and play with things on Azure as well. I'm here in the Azure portal. I'm going to search for static web app, and that's how I'm going to create my static website here. And a static web app is what it's called in the Azure portal. So let's go ahead and click create right here. And for this one, I just need to create a resource group. So I'm going to call this one, let's call it static site. I can call it whatever I need to. And in this one, I'm going to call the actual static web app dad jokes. Now I'm going to be using a repository that publishes a daily dad joke. Now for the hosting plan, I can choose one of two options. The free one is good for hobby or personal projects. And this one probably is along that line. It's a, a personal project that I've been working on uh, or using for demos and things like that. But the standard one has more options. Basically you can use the standard tier for um, publishing more websites than what you would get with the free tier. And it allows you to bring your own Azure functions and things like that to this. But more or less, these two are very similar to one another in their in their intent and what you can use them for. But this one is free, so I can have a website up to 250 megabytes of size. This one will, is nowhere near that, so it'll definitely fit within the context of what this is getting at. Now, if I wanted to choose a region for my backend APIs, if I was going to use functions, I would need to choose a region. The actual static content is not region specific. It's a global resource because it's distributed across a global network on Azure's backbone. So it's using the Azure CDN to distribute your static content. So I could choose East US2 and that'd be fine for this one. Now the deployment details here allows me to use another method for deploying this. So if I wanted to, I can deploy using something like Azure DevOps or I could create uh, some other means to just to deploy my website. But I'm gonna use GitHub integration here because what this is gonna allow me to do is um, create a static website that uses a backend repository from GitHub to deploy to Azure Static Web Apps. Now, this is fairly straightforward and I'll show you how to do it. It's uh, basically just authorize this particular static web app to get access to my GitHub account. And then what that's going to do is automate some things on the back end. So what, what it's going to do is create a GitHub action to deploy my new content whenever it's created inside my repository. So I'm going to choose the organization, which is my user. I'm going to choose this dad jokes uh, repository and I'm going to choose the main branch. 
Now, this particular uh, repository is right here. And what this does is creates a dad joke daily and updates a JSON file using some GitHub actions. And I already have those defined in this workflow. One of them posts to Twitter and another one creates a JSON file or updates a JSON file. And that basically just calls one of the scripts in the root. Uh, and the script itself is what will actually do the update to the JSON file. Now the JSON file is part of the static content that's hosted in this docs folder right here. And it updates this JSON file right here. And that will then be pushed to the static website whenever that content is updated. So whenever I create this, what it's going to do is add a new action into that repository that will allow me to publish the content when it's changed after I update it. So anytime there's a new push into the repository, that's going to get uploaded into my static website. So it's all automated. So the, the build presets that I can choose one of these other things, and we're going to look at a few of these uh, in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of these uh, static site generators that you can use for this. But you can also use frameworks like Angular, React, uh, Vue.js, or Blazor. And those are front-end APIs that are frameworks that allow you to render websites using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And they provide uh, a, an application development framework. And we're not going to get into those. But I'm mainly going to be interested in some of these other ones like uh, Gatsby Hugo or, or ViewPress that you can use. I'm going to choose custom right here because that's the one I'm using on the back end. I'm using something I wrote, which is basically a script that updates the content rather than using one of the uh, ones that are built into the service. And so my app location is located in a folder called docs. And that is this folder right here, docs. And that's the content that I want it to publish to the static website. And the, I don't have an API location since this doesn't have any APIs and the output location is just the root. So I don't need to change any of that. So that's all I need to set. And I can add tags and, and other things like that. But once I have all this uh, created, I'm gonna hit create and then come back and let this finish it. And I'll show you the results once it's done. So here's the resource that was deployed by creating this to the portal. Now, what this did behind the scenes is it created a GitHub action, and this is the action it created. It's called Azure Static Web Apps uh, Kind Mushroom, and that corresponds to the name it generated for this. I didn't come up with that. That's just something that it generated for me. If I come back here into workflows, it's the in addition to the two that I already had right here. So this is the website that it's generated, and basically what this uh, action is doing is whenever something is pushed or a pull request is generated, it will take the content from the static content hosted on this GitHub repo and then copy that over into my particular resource on Azure. And that's what this is doing right here. I'm not going to go through all the details of that, but that is what this is handling. So once that's done, I can then browse out to the website and I will see those updates. Now, because this is actually happening on a daily basis, I'm actually doing a push inside of this particular web app, this particular GitHub action right here. It's doing some uh, changes to the, the the static content on this, and then it's pushing to that, and that would actually trigger the publish that happens in that other action once this happens down here. So a few features that you can uh, look at inside of this is you can change from the, the SKU right here if you wanted to change to the premium, and this just shows you a breakdown of the various features of this one. So it, this has up to 100 gigabytes of bandwidth per subscription. It's free for that, and um, 100 gigabytes is, is is definitely more than this app will probably ever consume. Um, but in any case, that is available. And I can have up to, I can have SSL certificates, I can have custom domains, and mon many other things uh, I would have uh, for this. But in any case, this is fairly uh, straightforward. And uh, this would give me the ability to host uh, a couple of websites if I wanted to, but this is uh, very basic right here. And it's fairly generous considering the nature of this particular website that I'm doing. So it would definitely work for my purposes here. Another thing you can put behind it is functions. If I wanted to uh, put functions behind this, I could definitely do that. And that's for backend APIs, as we talked about uh, already. I can uh, put a custom domain if I wanted to. I could use Azure's uh, domain registry and then create a custom domain for this. Or I could put something like Cloudflare in front of it or any number of things. But in any case, I could put a custom domain in front of this if I so chose. And I can also hook up 
app insights to it and it'll show me the various kinds of things that I can do with app insights for this. And the configuration right here is basically just going to give me different kinds of application settings that I can read in and out of the particular app that I'm running in this. However, this one is just hosting my little static website that posts a daily dad joke. And so that is very easy to uh, see once I have this up and running. You can see the deployment history, it's already fired. And that's basically just looking at the GitHub actions uh, triggers that happen right here. And that's the one that fired for this particular app right here. So to view this, I can click on this and that's going to show me the Daily Dad Jokes website that has been loaded from uh, my GitHub repo into this static website. Now, I currently have this running on a GitHub Pages uh, front end as well, but uh, this is the quote unquote production website. And this is using GitHub Pages uh, to host this particular site. But if I wanted to, I could easily put this domain on this particular uh, website right here and that would give me the same website same uh, user experience and everything it's just hosted in a different place rather than using github pages like it's currently doing but the same github actions would be useful for creating it on github pages just like i would be using it if i was using it on my uh, static website on azure in any case this is my site right here daily dad jokes uh, for you dot uh, daily dad jokes dot net if you wanted to uh, look at that and you can uh, look at my Twitter feed too. It has those as well. But in any case, it's just a static website that is loading data from a JSON file that is updated by a GitHub action. And in this case, hosted on Azure rather than on GitHub pages. All in all, very similar result, but I still get to host it for free and have global distribution across the CDN. So hope you enjoyed that quick demo. Next week, we're gonna be looking at some rendering engines that you can also use with this that will allow you to create things like blogs and other kinds of cool things for creating static websites on Azure. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.